So I just want to explain to you a little bit about what went on when I was in the hospital. Um, actually, it's what what was going through my mind in the depressive state. Um, like I said, this this was before the medicine even had time to kick in. So this was the depression. Um, we had group time and they would try to teach us techniques and like coping skills, things like that. We'd have handouts and worksheets and they wanted us to write down things. Um, it asked us questions about our life and I could not think. Um, I had a hard time focusing. Um, I got distracted. I was preoccupied. I even lost my a lot of my memory. Um, even the ability to spell things. I, um, it was very disturbing and frustrating because I knew I used to be smart and now I felt dumb all of a sudden and I felt like the other people in there probably thought I was really stupid. Um, I couldn't comprehend anything. Um, like I would read through this material or they would read it and it was just like going in my eyes and poof, right out my ears and um, it, like I said, it's very frustrating. Um, I had lost my sense of smell um, and taste, which m made my appetite. I didn't have an appetite. I didn't even want to eat really because I didn't feel hungry and I didn't desire to eat. Um, and the word desire um, reminds me that I had really lost a lot of my desires. I, um, I didn't think I'd probably ever play guitar again. Um, I didn't even want to pray. Um, you know, I just, uh, even, even um, not just mentally, but physically, um, I felt very slowed down. Um, it took me longer to eat my meals. Um, I had longer time between bites of food. Um, I couldn't make decisions hardly at all. I was either constantly saying, I don't know, I don't care, I don't remember. Um, yeah, it was just very disturbing. And um, even picking out clothes, simple things like getting a shower, um, which was a little scary in the hospital. It was a mental ward, um, lesser severe patients than what was on the other wing, but we, it was co-ed, so there was men in with women, and um, they only had two showers. So we had to figure out what time of day was best when hardly anybody was wanting to take a shower. And, um, and we had a laundry machine, one laundry machine. There's probably maybe 10 patients on that unit. Um, so I would ask them, why am I, I don't understand all these things, what I'm experiencing. And they said, oh, it's just part of the depression. Um, it'll get better, it'll get better. And once the medicine kicks in, you know, you're going to feel so much better. So day after day, I, I didn't feel like I was getting any better. And um, I was having trouble sleeping at night, so they gave me some medicine to help me sleep. It worked for about three nights and then lost its effectiveness or, or whatever. Um, I went back on the medicine that I used to be on uh, right after I had Sydney, so about nine years ago, called Lamictal, and it's used to treat bipolar illness um, and also it treats people with epilepsy. I knew I had done very well on it before for all those years so I wanted to go back on that. Then the doctor also wanted to put me on an antidepressant along with the Lamictal which is the uh, Lamictal is a mood stabilizer. I was very skeptical about the one they wanted to put me on. I just did not feel right about it but I'm like okay this is a doctor he knows what he's doing so I just went along with everything. Um, they also gave me an anti-anxiety pill called Ativan, or you may have known it as Lorazepam. And uh, I could take that if I got anxious or I could take it to help me sleep. Um, so day to day would go on and I didn't even smile or show emotion probably at least for almost a week after I'd been there. And um, finally I started smiling some <clears throat> and uh, we would have recreation time. We could shoot pool, play card games, whatever, do puzzles. Um, but this one time, the one guy, and this is really weird because here we are in a mental ward with a bunch of adults. Um, he said, like, why don't we play, um, why don't we do the hokey pokey? And I'm like, oh my goodness, for real? Um, 
but one of the occupational therapist people, we had like three or four of them, and they would, you know, do those sessions and do things with us. Um, they're like, yeah, let's do it. So here we are, probably like seven or eight of us, doing the hokey pokey in the middle ward. <laughs> and I forget at what point, but I laughed out loud. So finally, I, I mean, I just, I got tired of hearing it. Um, that's just part of the depression, once the medicine kicks in. You know, every day the doctor would come, but he had like 22 patients or more to see every day. I mean, he would come in at like 7 in the morning and stay till like 8.30 at night. Couldn't imagine having those kind of hours and um, being a doctor. But, um, so he was very limited on how much time he could spend with each patient. He'd come sit in a corner or, or you know, we'd go into my room and sit down and be like, how you doing? I'm like, Mm, okay, I guess. I don't feel any better than I did, you know, yesterday or whatever. Um, you know, he'd be asking me a couple questions and he'd ask me, do you have any questions? Most of the time my fear was, um, well, I don't know how I'm going to pay for the medicine when I get out of here. And um, I'm fearful that I can take care of my family if I'm going to lose my job or not. Because at that time, in that state of mind, I was thinking, Oh my gosh, if I can't comprehend anything, um, I can't spell, I can't, you know, I don't remember things, how am I ever going to do my job? How am I going to take care of my kids? Um, so that was very worrisome. I had a lot of fear and worry, and that's not normally me. I mean, as a Christian, really faith-filled person, um, I would consider when I'm normal, I don't have a lot of fear at all. Um, I very much trust in God to keep my family safe, to help me take care of them, to help us to have jobs. Um, I don't worry about death. I don't worry about the bills. Um, I trust in God to provide for us. So in that state of mind, I had a lot of fear, a lot of worry. Um, so, you know, the doctor would just pretty much say the same thing every day and whatever. And um, eventually, I got to the point after two weeks where I was ready to get out of there. Um, I understand people are there to get help, but when you're in a place where you're just a bunch around, you're around a bunch of depressed people, and um, you know some had schizophrenia, um, some where they've come alcohol and drug abuse, and had tried to commit suicide um, for whatever reasons. You know there was a couple elderly people who had been through cancer, something like. Um, surgery or something that caused them to be depressed for whatever reasons but being in there with a bunch of depressed people it's very hard to start feeling better and uh, I will tell you that the greatest thing for me was knowing I had lots of friends and family that were praying for me and people came and visited me and it was hard for me because I didn't want visitors I didn't want people to come in there and see me in that state of mind. Um, plus part of the depression is you want to isolate yourself. I always got anxious, got anxiety around 5 o'clock every day. That's when visiting hours started. I never knew who was going to come see me. I never knew who had talked to Kevin. I didn't know who all knew about this. Um, Pastor Gary did ask me to, if he could share it with the elders and that, um, and I said that's fine. And um, I didn't know, you know, I didn't really care if my few close friends knew about it, too, because I thought, well, you know, the more prayer I have, um, it's just awesome. When two or more are gathered together, um, God's presence is there, and I know how powerful prayer is. Um, the other thing that really bothered me is I felt like I had disconnected from God. I didn't feel His presence very strongly there. Um, there was just a real demonic oppression. You could feel it. You could really feel it that Satan was trying to get a hold of people's minds and cause them to either stay in that state of mind where they're at, where there's fear, doubt, worry. Um, really, because when the mind is taken over, what the mind goes through affects us physically what our body goes through. And I feel like if the enemy thinks he, if he can get your mind, He's going to get your whole body. If he can get your mind to get all out of whack, then it causes people to destroy themselves, um, whether it be through uh, crazy, um, you know, in crazy ways, suicide. That's very 
that's very demonic. Underlying illness is depression. Um, I believe the enemy really tries to mess with their minds. For me, um, it's a chemical imbalance. Um, it, it was something that was inherited genetically through my mom's side of the family. My mom has suffered with depression in the past. Um, at the age of 65, they um, think that she maybe she had bipolar her whole life and just did not know it. But right now, my mom's on a small dose of a antidepressant. She's been through classes and graduated from it. Um, she's very upbeat, very um, faith-filled, and is living a very awesome life and um, very normal life. And uh, well, be of no above normal, spiritually speaking, um, an amazing life. Um, my mom's brother, one of them was an alcoholic, and her younger brother, who was 18 years younger than her, um, suffered from paranoid schizophrenic. So, so when you feel like you've lost your faith, um, it's very hard to explain. Um, but I didn't, it's almost like I didn't even desire to pray. Um, I had taken my Bible with me, and I tried to read it. I had to make myself read it, just the same way as I had to make myself eat. Um, it's like I knew I should do it, um, but I didn't want really feel like wanting to. Um, so because of the depression, my feelings and my emotions were all distorted and out of whack. Um, and it's hard for a person to really understand it unless you've been there, but that's why I want to explain it to you because I think it might help a few people and ones who are going through it, you know, can know that they can talk to somebody um, like me who's been there and um, I know there's support groups and things out there. But um, I tried reading the Book of Psalms and I tried um, reading some other things that were spiritual to lift my spirits and I didn't comprehend it. I could read it and forget it just as fast as I read it. Um, but I had a lot of visitors and Pastor Gary came up almost every other day or every couple days. Um, sometimes Karen came with him. And um, I know it was really hard. He even told me later it was really, really hard for him to see me in that frame of mind and in that state where he felt like there was nothing he could do to help me get me better, you know. And um, I just want to say, Gary, that you may have felt that way, but your presence being there and your prayers, um, you and Karen and others, um, friends and family, but you did make a difference. And um, it may not have looked that way, but I truly believe I know the power of prayer. And um, I give God more credit, way more credit, than the medicines for helping me out of this. Um, I believe so strongly in prayer and it changes things, it moves things. And even if it, we don't see um, progress in, this, in the natural, I know that in the supernatural, up in the heavens, God is moving heaven and earth. And he may be, uh, you know, the angels are fighting with the demonic, and um, but he is rooting for us and he is pulling for us. I mean, I think someday when we get to heaven, it will be extraordinary because God will show us all the situations and trials that could have happened to us that he saved us from, and that will be amazing. But the friends that came and visited me from church, um, I had people from work, um, some people from, you know, people that weren't even from either one of the churches we, we go to, but um, they all you know, prayed with me and just tried to encourage me. And my mom, my brother came up and they took the girls for, um, during spring break. And that was very, very helpful. And I appreciate too, um, all the people who were praying and helping my husband during this time. And um, one of the amazing things is about two weeks after I got out, I got out March 28th, I went in um, on the 13th. Um, but two days after I got out, or three days, um, was Easter, and I definitely wanted to get out in time for Easter. So um, we, we, we came to the sanctuary. I still was not quite out of the depression. Um, 
so if I didn't show a lot of emotion that day and we kind of left right afterwards, that's why. Um, it takes time. It really takes time. Some people that don't know about depression or never been through it, they think, you know, just snap out of it. You can control yourself. Um, you know, most of the time we can control. We can't control what other people do, but we can control what we do, what we say, how we respond to things. But chemically, when your brain is not producing enough of the chemicals that it needs to produce, or um, there's, there's serotonin, there's different chemicals, and there's receptors. And um, one of the things with bipolar disorder, there's swings of depression and swings with mania, manic. And so sometimes there's a longer period between those phases where a person can, can live normally for a while. But off of the medications, um, you can pretty much assume and know that you're going to spiral one way or the other eventually. Um, so being on a mood stabilizer is a very, very wise thing to do. And I'm going to say not going off of it is a wise thing to do. I've experienced that. I believe totally that God healed me a year and a half ago, emotionally, um, spiritually, and um, there were some physical aspects. I do believe I was healed. As far as going off the medication, I, I believe that um, God is allowing me to have this condition to need to be on the meds. Um, God creates medicine. Um, and he creates doctors. There's lots of Christian doctors, um, psychologists, psychiatrists, you know, heart doctors, ER doctors, um, and that's their gifting and is to help people with with any kind of disorders. Mental illness is an illness just like diabetes, high blood pressure, um, you name it. it. It is a health condition. Why people want to look at it differently, I have no idea. Um, it is a part of our physical bodies. The brain controls a lot of things and it controls the rest of our body. And if your brain's not right, the chemicals are out of whack, you cannot function properly. So um, I give a lot of credit, you know, all credit really to God because he's the creator of the doctors. He's the creator of the medicine. Um, but you have to know there's always a counterfeit. There's the real and there's the counterfeit. Um, I do believe the demonic is wrapped up in pharmaceuticals and the, in the medicine. Um, you know, there's there's medicine that's created that does a lot of good, and when it's in the right hands, it helps a lot of people. And then I believe there's medicines that, um, well, obviously we know street drugs. People with um, habits and motives, and you know that's the demonic. The, the enemy gets into people's minds, causes them, you know, maybe depression or you know, gets them addicted to alcohol and these drugs, that is a horrible thing. It causes people to do crazy things when drugs are in the wrong people's hands and the wrong kind of, of drug is being used on a person. They're abusing it. But um, I just wanted to let you know that that's my experience in the hospital. That's my experience with depression. Um, I had two relapses when I was younger. The first time I was 14 and I wasn't diagnosed with bipolar yet until I was 15. I had two hospital stays. Um, I was in for a month, then I was back out for a month, and then I went in again for another 25 days to get on the right meds, and that's when they made the diagnosis. The other um, relapse was right after I had my daughter Katie, and I had been sick. Me and my husband both had um, food poisoning, and um, for whatever, and probably, I was probably emotionally and physically drained from having a new baby. She was only two months old. And if you have a chemical imbalance or any sort of depression, clinically, um, major depression or whatever, um, you're more prone to have postpartum depression, which happens after a woman has a baby. So um, my husband, um, Kevin, he came out of it pretty quickly. About We both had to go into the hospital and get fluids put back in us. It was horrible. My brother came and watched Katie. but. Um, he came out of it about three days later, started eating and feeling good again, a little better, you know. Me, I think it threw my chemicals off, out of whack, being sick and everything, and um, I, I started feeling bad. I didn't want to take a shower, I didn't want to eat, um, I just wanted to sleep. So I, I personally 
knew that I was not in a good place and I needed to get help and probably get back on medicine. Um, when, you, when you have a baby, when you're pregnant, you can't be on all these medicines. So I had to do without it and um, <clears throat> didn't go back on it right away. So I told him I needed to go to the hospital and um, I ended up back in 11 days. And that was when I was about 22. So I've learned a lot and to be honest with you, um, this time I learned more you know, through my psychiatrist that I saw after I was out of the hospital than what I actually learned in the hospital. Um, she told me that whole time I was going through those symptoms of memory loss, um, no appetite, couldn't concentrate, couldn't remember how to spell things, um, couldn't comprehend anything. Uh, there's actually a term, it's called psychomotor retardation or psychomotor impairment. And um, it kind of sounds weird because I don't really like the retardation term, but I tell you, I felt retarded. I couldn't spell things. I mean, it was just crazy. Anyway, I looked it up on the internet. I wanted to learn a little bit more about it, maybe so I could help other people. And um, so I did. I gained a lot of knowledge about that. And um, the last thing I wanted to share with you is um, there's a couple songs that really, really spoke to me um, about two weeks after I got out of the hospital uh, at our church. My good friend Darcy actually was on the worship team that day and sang them. Um, and um, I'm going to do those here in just a little bit. But I want to tell you, um, just this last week, um, on um, Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, our church has two services. But uh, the 28th, um, actually, the message was about insomnia and why am I depressed. So it was perfect time for a message like this for me. But um, at the end of the sermon outline, it talks about the clinical symptoms of depression list what those symptoms are and it also talks about how to get help um, how to help yourself and how to get help for depression so um, I just want to encourage you to um, you know if you want this information I can give you any information about it just get with me sometime and I can definitely hook you up I'm sure we've all experienced depression at one point in time or another whether it be the loss of a loved one loss of a job you know there's many factors in it but um, clinical depression is being depressed longer than like two, three weeks, you know, and uh, not being able to pull out of it on your own. And um, you all probably know someone. And, and God, I think, is letting, allowing me to have this so that I can help people now um, to keep me humble and to help others who are going through it. So um, I believe it's actually a blessing. I can live a normal life, still do the creative things I do, still worship the Lord and um, you know I'm faith filled again everything came back everything I thought I'd lost God is an overcomer and even though the enemy tried to have a hold of my mind I knew God had a hold of my heart and when God has a hold of your heart and the Holy Spirit is in you it your mind ha and your your brain and your mind have to realign itself with what's in your heart so just I encourage you to read the Word of God